Okay, so we're gonna gonna continue our test review for the proportions and percentages uh, test, and this time we're gonna be focusing mostly on percentage problems. Now, I like to draw out percentage problems because uh, with a visual, because it helps me visualize what the problem is saying. So in this case, you have a 20-foot U-Haul trailer, which is shorter than an actual uh, fishing boat trailer. And that is what you have to figure out what the size is. So the U-Haul is a smaller version compared to the bigger one, which is the actual trailer. So, so if you have the U-Haul at 20 feet, and I want to know what is the size of the, of the uh, fishing boat, so the fishing boat is the one that's attached to my hole because that is the big size. And I know that the U-Haul trailer is 60% shorter. Now, if you're 60% shorter, that means you're dropping by 60%, which means it is actually 40% of the size of the actual other thing. So that's what it means to be 60% shorter. It's 40% of the size of the trailer. So this is why drawing it helps you visualize it, okay? All right, so the language of the problem translated to a drawing like I talked about in the videos and when I was teaching this um, is, is be it's better if you create visuals out of it. So anyhow, uh, now that I have this set up, it's, uh, I'm going to set up that proportion with is of, right? So uh, I did talk about that in part two of the video, but I'll, I'll put it here again. Remember that is of essentially means – uh, and then you have percent out of a whole, and that's kind of how you set this up. Now, remember that when you're doing most of these percentage problems are not going to be is off problems like the one we did in part two. So instead of is, it's better to think of the part. And instead of of, you think of the whole. Now, the things that go on the part will be things like tax and tip and discount and markup, commission, percent increase, the increase, the decrease, these are the things that go in the part. And then the other number is end up being your whole. So it makes sense in this case that the 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 the, the U-Haul is your uh, your part because it's shorter than the fishing boat, which is the whole. So knowing that, I will just set up a proportion for this problem, which I always start by putting the percentage of the problem in place. Now I'm gonna use the 40% because I wanna I don't want to use the decrease, I want to use the actual. Um, if, if I use this value, okay, what I'm going to figure out is not um, – I'm going to figure out this value, the actual gap, right? Because if I use the gap, I figured out the gap. So that's not what I want, though. I want the final number, and so I have to use the other value, the actual 40%. So if I do that and I put the 40 here, percent. And then I'm going to put the, uh, the total in, in place. That's what I'm looking for. So I put an X there. And then I know that the original is 20, and that's your part. All right. And then so you just cross multiply. That's your next step. We're going to cross multiply. And then this becomes 40X equals 2,000. And now I have to divide both sides by what's next to my letter, which is 40 in this case. So the 40s will cancel out from the left side. And then I do 2,000 divided by 40, which is the same thing as 50. So that means your boat must be 50 feet uh, in order for the U-Haul trailer to uh, be 60% of that. Not 60%, sorry, 60% shorter than that. So 20 is only about 40% of this 50, right? Slightly less than half. So that kind of makes sense. So if this is 50 here at the answer, so you go back to the drawing and plug in a number to see if it visually makes sense. Yeah, 20 is 40% of 50 because it's slightly less than half of the size of the U-Haul. So that kind of makes sense. All right, so let's look at a simpler problems now uh, that don't have this uh, – the such a situation, but I'm still going to draw it. Okay. So you got a 40% discount is what's being offered and the regular price is 200. What is the discount? All right. So then remember what we're trying to figure out here is the actual discount itself. And that's going to be the part. So we're looking for the part. 
because we're looking for the discount. Now, the whole is going to be the original price, so $200. And I like to put the percentage first, so I'm going to put that 40 but I don't know why I didn't do it in that order. And then, so percentage, whole, and part. Remember, always put an X for the part. What you're looking for is the discount or when you're looking for the uh, um, um, tax markup, uh, tip, commission, all of those. All right. I like to draw the problem too, so I'm going to do that. So the 200 is going to be your original 100% value, and I am looking for the discount, which is the decrease uh, in value. So I'm looking for how much it drops. So I'm going to use the 40% discount uh, because I want to find out what this value is, which is the drop. So remember, if you use the gap, you find a gap. If you use the actual, if you wanted to find out the final price, right, which you do also if you need to find out, then you would actually use this percentage, which would actually be 60, because if you are being discounted by 40%, you're only putting 60% of the total. But in this case, they want the discount, uh, first. And so it makes sense to use the gap to try to figure out what that discount is. All right. So the next step is to cross multiply and it's like, let's do that. So this will be a hundred X, uh, and then 40 times 200, which is, uh, same thing as 8,000. And then my next step is going to be dividing both sides by what's next to my X. So I'm going to divide by hundred. And when I divide both sides by 100, the hundreds cancel out, and then 8,000 divided by 100, uh, the two zeros just cancel out, and I get 80. So the the discount is 80. It was a big discount, but it makes sense because it's 40% discount, uh, which means I'm only paying for about 60% of the price. So so I, I mean, it's going to be a, a sizable amount of discount. All right. So now discounted price. Now if you if you have a discount, you have to take that from the whole. To figure out the total right so if, if you know now that this gap right here is 80 then what is this price now you could set up another proportion using 60 percent but since you already know that this is 80 it's probably easier just to do 200 minus 80 and figure out that this is going to be 120 right so the discount it's the price is going to be 200 minus the uh 80 so i'm only going to pay 120 dollars for this uh, thing. Now, both of these are final answers, so make sure you put them in boxes and make sure you do both parts of the problem because there's multiple points in here being earned because of that. All right, now let's try to find this one, the sale price of a road bike. So the road bike is, uh, is $600 once it's actually being sold on sale. This is why I like to draw, okay? They want the original price, they want the price that's tied up with 100%. They want this, but we don't know what it is. They're not giving you the original though. They're giving you the sales price. So they're giving you this. They're giving you the discounted price, all right? And you wanna find out what's the original price. Now, remember, this whole thing is being paid with a 40% discount, right? Because it's still part of the same nine problem here. So that means this 600 is only about 60% of the real price, just like we talked about in the previous problem. So if that is only about 60% of the original price, that is the number that I need to use to figure out the total. Remember, if I use the 40%, I'm not going to get the X, I'm going to get the gap. So if you use the gap, you get the gap. If, if I want to find the numbers, I have to use the edge numbers. And so I'm going to use 60% in my actual setup, not 40%, because I'm trying to figure it out what's matched to the 600 here. So you gotta match the numbers with their meaning. If you use the 40% together with the 600, that doesn't make sense because 40% should be matched with the gap. And you don't really know what the gap is either because you don't know what the total is. So the secret is to make sure your diagram, it will help you a lot when trying to solve these problems. All right, so the sales price of the road bike is 600. So let's set this up. Remember again, I'm gonna use 60% because I am matching that with a 600, which is the actual sales price. So to use the right percentage instead of the 40 uh, will actually help me get the answer right. So I'll put the 600 here. And then I am looking, ah, not there, oops. The 
bottom here is the total, is the actual X that I'm looking for. The part goes on the top. So this discount or discounted price goes up there. All right. So if, I, if you do it that way, you should be able to get your answers. Now I'm going to just cross multiply is my next step once the proportion is set up. And this is going to be 60X equals uh, 600 times uh, um, 100, which is going to be this many zeros, so 60,000. And now I have to divide both sides by what's, by what's next to the X on that side of the expression, which is the 60. So when you do that, the 60s will cancel out on this side. And then uh, uh, 60,000 divided by 60 is just 1,000. So that means that you've paid $1,000. It was the original price, but you only pay 600 because you got a 40% discount. That actually makes complete sense. Go back to the original problem, plug that in here, and realize and see if that makes sense. Right? So if you drop by 40%, that's it. That is four hundred dollars, and so you're going to end up paying six hundred. That makes complete sense. Um, so that's how you do it. If you do a diagram and you go back to it at the end, you can actually make sense uh, out of the problem. So that's kind of how I like to do it. All right. So we have a few more percentage problems to tackle. And uh, I'm going to do one more in this video, and I'll do the ones in the back back of the test review on the next one. All right. So this one here is a percent error problem. Remember to try to pause and do it before I actually show the, how to do it. Now, remember when you're trying to find percent error, you're trying to find how wrong the measurement is. And you can still set up that, that is off setup like usual. And you are looking for the percent error. So the X is going to be in the percent. Um, but remember that the actual value goes down here. And then up here is the part, which is the error. Now, you don't put the 35 in here. Otherwise, you're not going to get the percent that you're wrong. You're going to get the percent that you were right, right, or how close. 35 is the measurement you got. The error is the actual difference between them. So you're going to put the 1 in there. So now that you did that, you just uh, cross multiply. So you're going to do this times this and this times this. So you should get 36x uh, equals 100. And then your answer it will be whatever you do. Uh, you got to get rid of that 36. So divide both sides by 36. 36 cancel out, and your answer is going to be 100 divided by 36. So that is 2.7% or 2.8, actually, if you round it correctly. So two, And because you're looking for a percentage, you need a percentage sign in your answer. So don't forget about that. If, by the way, you accidentally plugged in the 35 up here as your part, then your answer would be something like 97.2. And that doesn't make sense. You're not 97.2% wrong, right? He was really close. So it's more, so it's the, it's the converse, right? That would be how much, how close he was, not how off he was. All right. All right. So I'll stop this video here. And on the next one, we're going to just finish a few more problems with percentages, uh, uh, which uh, can be seen in the test. I uh, hope you find this helpful so far. And I'll see you in the next video.